to participate in today's event. Please note that as an attendee, you are in listen-only mode, which means that the presenters cannot hear you. At any time during the presentation, if you have any questions, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. Feel free to type your questions in English or Spanish. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to all attendees following the presentation. For all of you just joining in, welcome again to our webinar, Things Every Continuing and Professional Education Global Leader Should Know, Perspectives in Latin America and the USA. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I would like to introduce the UPSIA International Network Chair, John Karen. John is the Associate Dean for Advanced Academic Programs at John Hopkins University Krager School of Arts and Sciences. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here today um, and welcome everyone who's uh, participating in this webinar. Uh, it's one of the best uh, turnouts we've had for a webinar and, and uh, I'm very pleased to, to uh, co-host this with our uh, partners, RECLA. It's, this has been in the works for a long time and it's very exciting uh, that we're finally able to roll this out. For those of you who may not be familiar with RECLA, the organization contributes facilitating networking and internationalization, sharing experiences, best practices, and providing access to new knowledge all within a framework of coexistence of people and institutions that ensure strong long-term relationships. They've got a phenomenal website. I encourage you to check them out and, and learn more about this great organization. It's also a pleasure uh, and an honor to introduce Dr. Marco Serrato, who will be facilitating the webinar uh, today. Uh, he is the Executive Director of Continuing Education and a Research Professor at Monterey Tech. And so without further ado, uh, he's got an amazing presentation. I know you'll enjoy it. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Serrato. Thank you Take so much. Thank you so much, John. Uh, thank you so much as well, Jacqueline. And uh, again, be very, very, very welcome to this uh, webinar where we are really excited to share some thoughts and some ideas uh, to uh, UPSIA and RECLA members. As, as uh, John already stated, my name is Marcos Serrato and I serve as Monterrey Tech, a Mexican university, we, which is uh, both a RECLA and an UPSIA member. And uh, we are confident to say that we will be sharing some thoughts and ideas on how to support you and your institutions through UPSIA and through RECLA on how to enrich your continuing education value proposition while taking advantage of these two organizations. Uh, just uh, as Jacqueline already said at the beginning, feel free to share uh, questions uh, either on English or in Spanish. We will be uh, going through such questions. We want to listen to your thoughts and your uh, questions such that we can make, make this webinar really interactive. I will share briefly this in Spanish as well. Uh, para todos nuestros miembros de Latinoamérica, sean bienvenidos. Nos da mucho gusto tenerlos aquí. Siéntanse, por favor, con la libertad de compartir preguntas a través precisamente de eh, la alternativa que aparece aquí en el webinar para enviarlas, sea en español, sea en inglés. Lo importante es interactuar entre todos nosotros. Uh, again, be very welcome. And if you allow me to start, uh, I would like to start uh, sharing what is the outline for uh, our webinar. I, uh, I, my idea, my plan is to share uh, uh, these thoughts for the next 25, uh, uh, no more than 30 minutes, and based on that, to spend the rest of the time uh, discussing some ideas with you. Uh, five main uh, issues inside the outline. The first one is that uh, we would like to spend a couple of minutes uh, on the motivation. And this is to discuss a little bit about what is the current and future role of university-based continuing education and to share some ideas and thoughts on what is going out there and how is it that the uh, environment for continuing education is and will be changing in the in the upcoming future. Uh, based on that, to uh, discuss a little bit about what is the value proposition that uh, each of our institutions uh, has in the present and in the near future, given such context, uh, based on these two ideas, to discuss a little bit about what is it that 
both UPSIA and RECLA, RECLA are doing for uh, their corresponding member institutions. And that is a really good basis for the main part of the webinar, which is uh, point number four over here, which is to discuss some opportunities for collaboration among UPSIA and, Re and RECLA members. In order, the main question that I would like to state in everyone's uh, 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 heads is, how is it that we can take advantage of UPSIA and RECLA to enrich our continuing education value proposition at our corresponding institutions. And based on these ideas, as I said at the beginning, to share some thoughts uh, through the questions and answers uh, section that we that we will have. Okay, having said that, uh, I think that the starting question, as I briefly said, can be uh, uh, described as this, as this. What is the current, but above that, the future role of university-based continuing education in our context. And I use uh, not only continuing education, but university-based, because as uh, uh, most of you are aware, the continuing education landscape has been changing in the latest years. And uh, as academic institutions, we think that this is a question that we should ask ourselves. And this is an important question because uh, as we have seen, higher education is under a profound disruption. And this is not something that we think, but this is something that has been uh, presented in several different uh, news and media, where they say, well, higher education is and will be changing to go beyond traditional models. And you can just see over here a, 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 a brief sample on what is being said by, on different media, uh, which is described in some sense as the end of the university monopoly, where uh, uh, different uh, ideas are presented on media on, on, on different contexts about the, the, the no policization, how this is the end of the university's monopoly of knowledge, uh, how there are uh, other alternatives, which all of us in the uh, continuing education landscape are aware of and we're working on, like the alternative credentials, like boot camps, like new learning models, new learning technologies, how uh, the value of a, of a college degree has been questioned and will be questioned in the upcoming future. And uh, this is something that is happening out there right now. If we look a little more into detail, we can see that the continuing education landscape is precisely changing. But one of the reasons why it is changing for us as uh, academic institutions and universities is that there are new players and value propositions in the uh, continuing education landscape. This is just a brief sample. I am sure that you are aware about uh, uh, some of uh, these different actors. Some of us as academic institutions collaborate with some of them. It could be like Coursera, like EDX. Uh, you can think of other alternatives like, like Linda, which, is, which works closely with LinkedIn Learning, just to mention a few. But if we think a little uh, beyond the continuing education landscape, and if we look at the education landscape on an overall basis, we could think, that, uh, I guess that you will agree on me, uh, while I say that the world of education is changing. And this is just a, a, a brief sample provided by CV Insights last year, where we can see that uh, there are different actors and value propositions in terms of uh, how to support individuals and organizations in terms of career development, tech learning, learning management systems, how to engage students and participants inside the classroom, either on a face-to-face -face blended or online format, new story, to story, story tools, uh, new alternatives to learn languages, to, uh, to have a better administration of the institution, to provide course materials, uh, to start working on learning analytics, which is crucial on the future of our value proposition, et cetera, et cetera. The main idea that we want to leave on the table here is the landscape and our context in terms of continuing education for our institutions is changing in a profound manner. So that takes, takes us to this question that I have already mentioned, what is our value proposition? And every time I ask such a question like this one, uh, you may see that I am a, a huge fan of cartoons, and in particular, I'm a huge fan of uh, Calvin and Hobbes. So every time I have such question, I, I, I try to think about it uh, 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 based on one of these cartoons. And I, I really like this one presented by Calvin, where he says, you step into this chamber, set the appropriate dials, 
and it turns you into whatever you would like to be. And while looking at this cartoon, I was thinking a little bit about continuing education. What is, what is, what is it that we are offering or what, what is it that we want to offer to our different audiences? It may be individuals on different segments uh, uh, on a regional, national, national or wo worldwide basis, or the same thing for organizations in the private, in the governmental, um, ONGs or the academic sector, what is the value proposition that we want to offer through continuing education? And this is crucial uh, because we can also think uh, on not only on what is happening outside, but there are also new interests, not only outside our institutions, but also inside our institutions. And um, given my, my engineering background, I have to confess that I am a huge fan of Dilbert. And I also like this Dilbert's cartoon. When we think of internal stakeholders, the main message on this cartoon is, well, there, is, there are new and different expectations on the role that continuing education should play in our institutions in the near future. Not only from a financial point of view, as it is presented on this cartoon, but way beyond that, our context, the world is changing, and upscaling and reskilling for individuals is something that becomes crucial. And that is because, uh, uh, as you are also aware, we are facing this VUCA context with high volatility, uncertainty, uncertainty complexity, and uh, ambiguity. And there are other factors like digital transformation, the fourth industrial revolution, where we can see several different alternatives like uh, uh, big data, open data, the internet of things, cloud technology, the digitalization and automation uh, on different, several different sectors, advanced analytics, new technologies, virtual and augmented reality. And the main idea behind this is, well, this is creating a strong impact among individuals but also, as I also said, among organizations. Things are changing, things are changing in a faster manner. So the role that continuing education is playing and will be playing is going to be different. And we know that uh, in, in, the, in the last couple of years, the concept of lifelong learning has uh, become more important because of this situation. What uh, is usually being said is that uh, whatever we, do with the students at the undergraduate level for four, five, or six years, uh, that will not be sufficient for 30 plus years that they will be part uh, of an organization, of a sector that will be working out there. The world is changing so much that upskilling and reskilling becomes a crucial part on the future of individuals and organizations. And it's not only about lifelong learning. Uh, I really like this idea presented by uh, th this organization LIFE, which is the uh, uh, States for Learning in, in Formal and Informal Environments Center, where they state that on a horizontal basis we can think of lifelong learning on how and how continuing education will play a more active role on adults uh, on, on given all of these changes. But we must also be aware not only about lifelong, which is the horizontal axis, but also about life-wide learning which means we have to acknowledge as academic institutions that individuals are learning a lot of things, a lot of really valuable skills, knowledge, new competencies, not only through academic institutions, but through several different things that they are doing throughout their lives. And while looking at this image, the main, uh, the main idea that I would like to state in our minds is well, what is the value proposition that we want to provide as academic institutions when individuals are faced under this uh, um, perspective? And if we add a little more to the context, uh, it is also worthy to mention that it is not only about hard skills, but given all of this, uh, um, con this context and this VUCA environment, it's not only about hard skills, but it is also about soft skills. The World Economic Forum, as, uh, as several of you are aware, defined uh, key soft skills towards 2020, but several other and different sources, you can see some of them over here, state that given this technological change, the pace of change and everything that is happening out there uh, presents not only hard, but especially soft skills as a key issue regarding the future of 
professionals, the, the future of individuals and the future of organizations. And if we go into that and if we put this into a, a, a specific perspective in terms, let's say, of the US uh, market and the Latin American market, uh, some of you know a lot more than myself in terms of the US context and the US market, but just if you allow me just to share a, a couple of ideas on this vein, uh, what is happening? And I really like these statistics presented by Pew Research Center, where they say, well, uh, what we see that is happening out there is that individuals are looking more and more for the right content, for the right purpose, under the right learning experience. And that is a strong message from my perspective for all of us as uh, actors in the continuing education landscape. If we go a little further on this vein, uh, there is we can identify that there is an increasing uh, responsibility as perceived by individuals on developing their own skills. And you can see these uh, uh, really interesting studies presented by Pew Research Center as well, where they see this is in particular for the for the for the US context, but uh, we can identify here that Americans think that uh, uh, they should take greater responsibility responsibility on developing their own skills. And I think, and this is just a case on my personal side, that a, a, a quite similar situation takes place not only in the US, but in the Latin American market and even in some other emerging economies as well. But we have also, uh, we must also be aware, as it is presented on the, on the, uh, on the data on the right hand side of this slide, it, we must also be aware about different profiles and interests that are uh, uh, taking place on this more complex uh, world. If we speak in particular about what is happening on uh, emerging economies, and I will put some ideas over here on the table. Uh, first of all, this is crucial in emerging economies. Why? Because emerging economies, and you can see just the particular case for Mexico, but a, pre, a similar situation takes place in most countries of Latin America. Uh, these countries nowadays, their population is mostly young people. But if we look into the near future, in the next five to 10 to 15 years, these young people is becoming, is, is turning part of uh, several different organizations. They start to work, they need to develop new skills, and they need to reskill some of the things that they already know uh, uh, to do. And that presents an, a challenge, but, but also an opportunity, not only for uh, institutions in Latin America, but also for institutions in the US. As we, uh, as we turn into this more globalized world, well, the question that arises is, how is it that we can uh, uh, support these specific uh, segments while developing these new knowledge and the skills that they are demanding. And this is crucial, again, as I said, in emerging economies uh, where young population is getting into the labor market in a fast, in a fast manner. So having said all of these ideas, uh, the main question, as, uh, as I said, is, well, it's OK to talk about how to enrich our value proposition given this context. But given this context, we identified that there are some challenges, yes, there are some opportunities as well, but what we are thinking of is how to enrich our institutions, continuing education value proposition, given all of this context and all of these uh, 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 things and aspects that are taking place in uh, out there. Well, stating this question, uh, what we would like to share with you are some ideas and these are some great initiatives that are conducted by Bo, by Obsea and Recla as well. And I would like to briefly go through all of them and to link these uh, initiatives with uh, all of these aspects that are taking place out there and the main question that we are stating. If we look briefly at Obsea, allow me to recall a, a couple of uh, basic concepts that are worthy to mention. For those of you that are not totally aware of, of OPSIA, it, is, uh, it was founded in 1915, and now it serves uh, precisely as uh, one, a leading public and uh, private uh, uh, colleges and universities in North America. It's been there for more than 100 years. 
uh, then the association has served its members with really innovative and appealing conferences and specialty seminars, research, benchmarking information that supports analysis and decision making at our own institutions. Uh, something that is, uh, that in my personal point of view is really valuable about UPSEA is that it, it builds greater awareness on the viral, uh, of the viral link between contemporary learners and public policy issues which from my personal perspective, that is something that uh, academic institutions in emerging economies like Latin America, we need to pursue in a greater, in a greater uh, manner. Who are UPSIA members? And uh, what is it that uh, we, it's, it's a good moment for those of you that are already UPSIA members, for those of you that are not, what is it that we can, and we can uh, find and identify in UPSIA in the, in the present and near future? Uh, it is worthy to recall that UPSIA member institutions represent a variety of continuing and online education units. There are several different organizations, large and small, who offer credit and non-credit programs, traditional uh, and online courses and degrees, as well as certificate programs to build access for non-traditional adults and students. And if you start thinking about this, uh, while being in contact with some of these organizations and creating uh, 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 stronger networking capabilities in between all of us as organizations, that is a really a, a good seed to think about how to enrich our continuing education value proposition. And while speaking about such value proposition, something that is uh, quite accurately stated by, by UCEA is, well, what is, what is our target audience? Which are these adult or non-traditional students? Uh, while there are more than 2.6 million students that uh, uh, were uh, are attended on a four-year college and living on campus after entering college full-time directly from high school in, in 2011, there are almost 15 million working path, parents, veterans, and military personnel, among others, 85% of the 17.6 million Americans that got enrolled in higher education, they were also attending college. And that is part of what UPSIA is working on in, a, in, a, in an important manner uh, through these different activities and members. These contemporary, sometimes called non-traditional, I'm not that sure if non-traditional should be the right uh, way to define them uh, um, in the near future. These non-traditional students struggle to balance the comparing demands of work, family, and education. And that is something that is faced not only in different regions in the US, but also in uh, different countries and regions in Latin America and Europe as well. Where are some of, given this context, what are some of the OPSIA benefits? Uh, uh, first one, uh, it's a great opportunity for networking as, as OPSIA defines it. And uh, I can speak for uh, our institution as Monterrey Tech. This is something that we have found really useful uh, in OPSIA, uh, there's uh, different networks inside OPSIA. There are six networks that are designed to serve professionals practicing in the key areas that define this vibrant and growing sector of higher education. You can see on this slide what these uh, uh, different networks are. They are related to international issues, to business and operations, marketing, enrollment, and student services, online administrations, community and economic engagement, program planning and implementation, and uh, something that, uh, from my perspective, is worth it uh, to think of is the, the characteristics of each one of our institutions are different. The challenges that we face are different. There are some common things, but there are some uh, different things as well. What are the priorities that my institution in particular is facing? And how can I take advantage of, six, uh, of, of these networks to get engaged on them and face such challenges in a better manner. In the same vein, something that OPSIA works on is on research and benchmarking. Uh, the, 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 the OPSIA Center for Research and Strategy, it provides um, ongoing benchmarking data to members and also provides a variety of custom research options. You can see some of the ideas over, over here. I won't go into detail into them, but you can look at these slides afterwards uh, 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 and, and, and read them in detail. But the main message is there are different, different there is different data and information uh, created by the Center for Research and Strategy and UPSIA. And that is a great tool to support analysis and decision making inside our own institutions. Uh, 
among the OPSIA benefits, there are, uh, there's also on building the online enterprise. There is, uh, there is the National Council for Online Education, which precisely focuses on the factors that are crucial to a successful online enterprise. You can see some of the uh, specific uh, lines for work over here. This is if you are interested, if your institution is interested on getting engaged on uh, enriching or starting a, a, a new value proposition related to a digital format, to an online format, that is that is that is a, a, a really a really great alternative. Uh, something that is also uh, quite relevant, uh, UPSIA works a lot on advocacy, which uh, is something quite relevant and I think again that uh, uh, not only in the US but in Latin America we have a strong opportunity to work with governmental organizations to uh, um, promote and create a coalition to in working to advance on the adult learner agenda expanding post-secondary education credentialing opportunities this is something this is part of the future role that continuing education must play and we must not only be aware of that but should also be active uh, uh, um, active while working on that on that vein and also internationalization trends uh, which are really crucial as well in the same vein allow me to briefly share uh, for those of you that are not related to recla and for those of you that are part of uh, recla it is really worth it to put on our minds what is it that, that is conducted as initiatives by recla and how to state some links in between both parties in this sense. Uh, for those of you that are not related with RECLA at all, RECLA is the Latin American network, uh, Latin American and European network for uh, continuing education and uh, something that is worthy to, to mention, I'm sorry, something that is worthy to mention is that uh, UPSEA nowadays has 80 associates, as you may see on the right hand side of this slide. 80 associates located not only in several different countries of Latin America, but in the U US and uh, in Europe and Spain as well. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, 80 associates from 15 countries in, this, uh, in these regions. And uh, it, it, uh, RECLA started 20, a little more than 20 years ago. It, it, in the same vein that OPSIA, it is focused on uh, creating collaborating initiatives and promoting internationalization about, uh, about its members. Uh, it promotes different initiatives to enrich their continuing education value proposition. How? While sharing experiences, best practices, and creating collaboration initiatives to improve the state of the art of continuing edu education in the region. This is an image that you can, uh, where you can see this was our, our the last uh, uh, RECLA meeting that took place in, in University of Sevilla in Spain, where we had a chance to uh, be discussing several different topics and interacting in between all of the RECLA members. What are some of the uh, uh, strategic drivers for RECLA? They are aligned into three main veins, as you may identify on this slide, uh, in terms of strategic alignment, where, you, where we have webinars like the one that we are conducting here. Uh, we also have professional internships, strategic and competency studies. We are also strongly interested on in sharing best practices, uh, topic focused collaboration groups, as you will see in a second. We have awards, as UPSIA also has. We have a digital magazine. We host regional and international meetings. We have several different initiatives related to internationalization, like uh, some scholarships for RECLA members. What I mean by that is uh, members that work at the uh, continuing education units for RECLA members, they have an opportunity to, 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 to attend for a small uh, period of time uh, another institution to go and get to know a little bit of how they operate. We share best practices, concerns, and the main idea is to promote uh, networking opportunities with uh, among different uh, members. If I go out briefly into detail in three, these three main veins, I already mentioned the webinars. Uh, we have several different topics of interest, which are of interest to OPSIA members as well, on continuing education design, delivery, and management, online, different educational technologies used on continuing education, key performance indicators, 
the the continue the role that continuing education plays on social responsibility uh, among others. Uh, also, these professional internships that I mentioned, which correspond to short-term visits between RECLA members, individuals, where we share best practices on both academic and administrative fields, and they are usually defined under a predefined work plan and schedule. And the main idea is, as I already mentioned, that they benefit both uh, parties. On the second vein, on sharing best practices, we have topic-focused collaboration groups, as OPSIA also has, and we see that there are some opportunities to enrich collaboration while uh, having some uh, uh, topics discussed in between institutions on both sides, uh, on academic and administrative management. Uh, RECLA also has a sustainability uh, group, uh, also on digital, online, and virtual continuing education. Uh, there are also uh, awards uh, uh, that are promoted by RECLA to recognize the dedication and commitment of institutions and professionals in continuing education. Uh, RECLA also has a, a, a magazine where uh, studies and best practices are shared. And the main idea uh, of these awards and the magazine, well, is to foster leadership and organizational development for continuing education in the, in the region. And as I also mentioned, uh, there are several different internationalization initiatives. Uh, the scholarships for RECLA members, part and full time, uh, uh, either face-to-face -face or online. What we also have through this is that we offer the possibility for some uh, members of continuing education units at RECLA institutions to get enrolled on a continuing education program from another RECLA institution. And we offer scholarships in between, in between uh, uh, RECLA member institutions. And this is really helpful because this, it allows us to uh, get to know a little more of the things that we are doing uh, uh, at each different institution. Having shared all of these ideas, I know that there, these are several different ideas that I'm just going through quite fast, but we wanted to put all of them on the table. Uh, we want to put all of them in our minds. Uh, 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 again, the main idea will be to have you thinking a little more about them and sharing some specific ideas and proposals that we would love to hear about. Uh, but what are some of the opportunities for member institutions, either at RECLA or either at UPSIA? Uh, first of all, uh, what we think is that while exploring these opportunities, we think that we must acknowledge that internationalization is a key edge for continuing education growth and development. Our target audiences either it may be individuals or organizations, every day they are more uh, involved in a globalized world, in global markets, markets. So our continuing education value proposition should consider that. Again, what is the future role of university-based continuing education? While I, I, while I say university-based, as I mentioned at the beginning, it is about what is it that continuing education from a university-based perspective what is it that makes it different to other continuing education academic value offers uh, uh, that are presented by non-academic or non-university uh, uh, providers? What is our value proposition given this VUCA and lifelong, life-wide learning perspective that I was speaking about? And how to focus on the specific segments? There are this is of special importance on emerging economies. As I mentioned, this is crucial in emerging economies like Latin America. A similar situation takes place in other reg regions like Asia and Africa as well. But for RECLA members and for collaboration in between OPSIA and RECLA members, what are some of the opportunities that are taking place out there? And the main idea over here, uh, we would like to summarize it into three main veins. The first one is, well, it is a share and learn perspective, both on an individual basis from each one of us as members of our continuing education units, but also from an organizational perspective. It is really important to take advantage of UPSIA and RECLA, and RECLA to share and also to learn. It is also important and we, we strongly uh, invite member institutions to promote and discuss relevant topics on your agenda and also on other institutions' agenda. It is really useful to share and discuss whatever is being relevant for you, how to enrich 
your continuing education portfolio, how to enrich your operations, what kind of uh, systems on the academic or administrative side uh, are you using? How is it working for you? How is it working for others? And the main idea, as it is stated on the third bullet over here, is to engage and be involved. And we think that it's definitely, definitely worth it. Just to, 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 to end up my, 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 this presentation, and uh, we will be glad to listen to your, uh, uh, to your comments and questions. Uh, I would just briefly like to mention that there's an, an upcoming uh, international uh, meeting for RECLA, which is going to take place on October, as you may see on this slide. It is going to take place at the Universidad Pontificia Bolivariana in Colombia. Uh, it is really a great opportunity to be engaged, not only for RECLA, but for OPSEA members as well. And in the same vein, it's not only about RECLA, but there are also several different uh, initiatives and events conducted by OPSEA, uh, where uh, all of us can get engaged and can, can, can learn out of them. Uh, just to finish up this and to go into the, the, the Q&A session, uh, I would like to take it back to you, John. Maybe you can share a little bit about these events by OPSEA. And based on that, we can go into the Q&A session as well. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Marco. Terrific job. Great presentation. Um, yep, the, uh, the Solar Online Leadership Summit uh, is coming up soon, uh, in June 18th to the 20th. Uh, and if you haven't registered and you're interested, there's still time. It's a terrific conference. A little bit uh, smaller than the, the annual conference, uh, so great way to network and and uh, and really um, you know do deep dives on on various topics. Um, and also uh, as the chair of the international network, I just wanted to uh, invite members uh, uh, to if you're interested in joining the network, uh, it provides members with insights, general direction, strategy, trends and models for integrating international education into your work. It also creates an exchange of ideas, programs, services, and initiatives that expand member knowledge regarding global and international education. You can join online. It's very easy on UPSEA's webpage. Uh, and if you have any questions about the network or how uh, to join or being more involved in the international network, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, my email address is John Karen at jhu.edu. And uh, so with that, uh, we I'll turn it back over to Jacqueline uh, for questions. All right, thank you so much, Marco and John. Thank you so much for that. Um, we are opening the Q&A now, so if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into your Q&A uh, Q box at the bottom of the control panel. Um, so there should be a few right now that are written in Spanish. Elizabeth, if you'd like to join us um, to translate those questions. Oh, I'm afraid I don't see them. Uh, don't worry, Elizabeth. I'm, I'm being able to take a look at them. Uh, uh, some of the participants are asking if uh, the, 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 the slides can be shared. Of course, that they can be in sh uh, shared. Luis. Luis Amaka is 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 writing to us asking that question. Of course, Luis, they can they can they they will be shared. Uh, they will be shared for, to both Recla and and Opsia members. I can see them, Marco. If uh, perfect. Um, they are they are sending greetings from Uru, Rivera, Uruguay, from Claudia Estrella. Uh, there is uh, they're all stating uh, gratitude for for the for the presentation and they would like to see the presentation. Perfect. I can also see that um, John John from Sonoma State University sending uh, regards. Uh, thank you so much, John. Uh, I'm glad to see that we have, uh, uh, we also have uh, David from Universidad del Bosque in Colombia, uh, who is, who is uh, writing us over here. Uh, as I said, uh, the slides, the slides are, are available. I see that uh, some of you are also asking about uh, 
how to get engaged either on Recla on, or, and or UPSIA, UPSIA. If you are interested on, on joining any of the networks, just feel free uh, to, to contact us. You can even see my personal email account on this last slide on the lower right hand side. Uh, I can I will be glad to put you in contact with the corresponding uh, party either at UPSIA or RICLA. Uh, as we said, it is really important and worth it to take advantage of the different opportunities that both networks present. Marco, we do have one question um, from Maria. She's from Guatemala University, Rafael Lanziar. She says, it has been a pleasure to be here and thank you for the presentation. Where can we get more information about memberships and other members? Um, so I, what I can do is I can actually include the links to the network for the UPSIA, um, and I can also include, Marco, your email in the chat box so that it's easier for everyone to access, if that's okay with you. I can Perfect. include it in the chat box as well as the links. So feel free, um, everyone who's joining us right now, to um, you can click on your chat box all the way at the bottom of your control panel, and I will include those links. Sure, and, 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 and just uh, taking advantage of such question, I think it's, uh, I would invite uh, uh, everyone to, to take a look at the at the websites of both organizations, uh, uh, I just briefly share some of the initiatives that are uh, conducted by both organizations. But you can see a little more of detail over there. Who are some of the mem who are the member institutions on both sides? And I think that is really good um, food for thought. You know, on how to take advantage of uh, uh, what the, the initiatives conducted by both parties. Uh, uh, to again, to uh, enrich my particular continuing education value proposition in my institution, at each of our institutions. Marco, I would like to add that San Cloud State University is also part of OPSIA and RECLA. We right. are number eight in the, in the map that you saw. So we are also willing to share our experiences in both organizations right right thank you thank you for that uh, uh, elizabeth uh, i can also see a couple of additional uh, uh comments uh, i can see lolita carrillo who says uh thank you so much for the presentation it's really important to create opportunities for a joint work uh taking in account innovation and creativity in between uh, both organizations and, uh, the, uh, and and its corresponding members, and I think I think that is, that is a, a, a really good way to summarize the message on this webinar. Uh, we need to enrich our value proposition. We have opportunities if we collaborate and work together as academic institutions, and uh, I could say that, that 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 is an added value in some sense, but it could also be a, re a requisite, you know to stay competitive in the near future in the continuing education landscape. Oh, wow. um, I can see that John Green is also uh, asking if he's curious to learn if RECLA members are interested in student exchanges or custom programs for their students to study abroad, um, I, I am sure that if you if you uh, share some some of these ideas, John, on what is it that your particular institution will be interested in doing, uh, such information can be shared among Recla among Recla members. And uh, uh, the first step is to share such information, but while active participate at the end at least from my perspective it is really useful when we have these one-to-one -one conversations while while getting to know each other so uh, uh being engaged on both UPSIA and RECLA can help a lot in that vein uh feel free to share any information and i will be glad to send you with the with the with the, with the right people inside RECLA uh, as elizabeth also mentioned
I see a comment also. Thanks from Mario Ernesto Quintanilla, who I know that is in El Salvador. So thank you, thank you to you, Mario Ernesto, for be, uh, participating on this webinar. There is an inquiry, Marco and John, about um, how to join Opsia. Where uh, is it possible to share a link for Opsia if the universities in Latin America want to become members? Absolutely. Actually, I just added that link in the chat box. Um, it's our page that takes you directly to uh, where you can become a member. It, it gives you a little bit more information of SIA and also just a sign. You can actually sign up to receive more information. It's not necessarily that you're registering. You're just adding your name, your contact information, and someone here from our membership team can contact you directly to give you more information in regards to becoming a member of SIA. If anyone else has any questions, please feel free to type them in the question box. We have a few more minutes left for the Q&A. Marco, there is a question. What has been your benefit of being in both organizations as an institution? Could you highlight two aspects sure sure and I, I think that you can also help me on that one uh, elizabeth since, since since you joined both organizations uh, from our perspective at monterey tech uh, i will summarize the benefit on first of all the value of being able to identify the perspective for continuing education in different regions as we well even though we may think that continuing education is playing a, a quite similar role worldwide it's about this uh, being global being global but local at the same time uh, uh, the opportunity while participating on opsia is to identify the state of the art on what is happening in uh, 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 continuing education with leading institutions in the in the us and abroad but at the same time in recla we you have an opportunity to interact with leading institutions in the Latin America, in Latin America and, and, and Europe, but um, having also an opportunity to discuss local opportunities. So it's 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 about keeping a right balance in between doing doing those things. How to do it? That's part of the beauty of, on, on, on from my perspective on both organizations. Uh, we have had at Monterey Tech people from other universities visiting us. Uh, continuing education units on, on RECLA initiatives uh, to share and learn, as I pre previously said, we have had an opportunity to present some ideas and so at, at, at the, for instance, at the latest UPSI event. And presenting your ideas gives you a lot of feedback. And for us, it was really useful to get feedback from several UPSI members. So being actively engaged on both, or, on both networks, on both organizations, uh, provides you an opportunity to know again the state of the art but to be quite sensitive to what is happening on a local and regional basis as well i don't know if you have any any additional ideas on that vein elizabeth yeah uh, what uh we've been uh, members of recla almost a year and uh, i would like to say that it has been a very enriching experience because we are able as an institution as an american institution to to see what life love lifelong learning opportunities can be uh can be approached through a different lens is is different continuing education latin america they look at different approaches they are very creative they are very flexible and uh, and i think as an american institution we have learned quite a bit from from that nimbleness 
that the universities in Latin America show in the development of programs, that we don't always look like, we look at them in a different way, as I said. We have, a, the, the goal is the same, but the approach is different and very creative. I, I, and just to complement that, Elizabeth, because I think you you you, you describe it in, in a really good manner. The goal is the same. The approach is different. While while having an opportunity to look at such different approaches, you learn and you get ideas on how to do things at your own uh, continuing education unit. Not only in terms of what kind of programs, topics, academic areas, uh, but also on how to manage your continuing education unit, et cetera, et cetera. I think that is that is that is a, a key part of the value on, on this vein. Yes. And if I may say so in Spanish for my RECLA colleagues, uh, la experiencia de ser miembro de OPSIA para nuestra universidad ha sido increíble. Tenemos un acceso a una red De, de conexiones, de ideas, de apoyo, del compartir. Entonces, yo a, a mis colegas de Recla les, les animo a que consideren a OPSIA o una otra organización que se, a la que podrían a, conectarse. Ha sido también una, una experiencia muy enriquecedora. I totally agree. Totalmente de acuerdo. And I will not translate. I'm sorry, my OPSIA colleagues. <laughs> well, I, I I don't see any further uh, questions or comments. I don't know. Uh, um, Jacqueline, John, Elizabeth, if uh, having said, uh, having shared all of these ideas, anyway, th there is our, uh, our my contact information. Uh, 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 we maybe we can uh, finish the webinar here. But anyway, uh, we will be glad in supporting any any of the participants on any further information they may require. Sounds good to me. Um, I, yeah, I don't see any other questions, um, but thank you so much for joining us today, Marco. Thank you so much, John and Elizabeth, for all your hard work during the webinar. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, again, and um, everything went really well, so I appreciate everything. All right, so if anyone has any final questions, please ask them now. If not, this will conclude our webinar for today. Thank you, Jacqueline. All right. Thank you so much, right. John. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. And thank you, everyone, for participating on this webinar. Muchas gracias por participar. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Buena tarde. Hasta luego. Bye-bye. Adios.